Listen Sanadai presents The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, Is some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door? Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door? This it is, and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then, no longer. Sir, said or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, Long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was broken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word they had spoken was the whispered word. Lenore, this I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore, merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what threat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here 
I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter in their step a stately raven of the saintly days of yore not the least obeisance made he not a minute stop or stayed he but with the mien of lord or lady perched above my chamber door perched upon a burst of palace just above my chamber door perched and sat and nothing more then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore though thy crest be shorn and shaven brow i said art sure no craven ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore quoth the raven nevermore much i marvelled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly though its answer little meaning little relevance bore for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door bird or beast upon the sculptured burst above his chamber door with such name as nevermore but the raven sitting lonely on the placid burst spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour nothing farther then he uttered not a feather then he fluttered till i scarcely more than muttered other friends have flown before on the tomorrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before then the bird said nevermore startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken doubtless said i what it utters is its only stock and store got from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never never more but the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling straight i wheeled a cushion seat in front of bird and bust and door then upon the velvet sinking i betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy thinking what this ominous bird of yore what this grim ungainly ghastly gaunt and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore this i sat engaged in guessing but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fierce eyes now burned into my bosom's core this and more i was divining with my head at ease reclining on the cushions velvet lining that the lamp light gloated over but whose 
velvet violet lining with the lamp light gloating over she shall press ah never more then me thought the air grew denser perfumed from an unseen sense swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor wretch i cried thy god hath lent thee by these angels he hath sent thee respite respite and nepenthe from thy memories of lenore quaff oh quaff the sky nepenthe and forget this lost lenore coat the raven nevermore prophet said i king of evil prophet still if bird or devil whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed the here ashore desolate yet all undaunted on this desert land enchanted on this home by horror haunted tell me truly i implore is there is there balm in gilead tell me tell me i implore put the raven never prophet said i thing of evil prophet still if bird or devil by that heavens that bends above us by that god we both adore tell the soul with sorrow laden if within the distant eden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name lenore clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name lenore quote the raven nevermore be that word our sign of parting bird or fiend i shriek upstarting get thee back into the tempest and to the night's plutonian shore leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken leave my loneliness unbroken quit the burst above my door take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door quot the raven never more and the raven never flitting still is sitting still is sitting on the pallid bust of pallas just above my chamber door and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming and the lamp light over him streaming throws his shadow on the floor and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted never more thank you for listening have a good day